everybody, what's going on? This is Bruce Lebowski Studio. Uh, this is part two of my DIY uh, floater frame molding video. And uh, we're going to now, in this video, take what I cut in the first video, right here, my molding. And I'm going to show you how I chop it up to size and uh, join it to make a frame. So thanks for joining me. Okay, I just want to show you a quick clip of where I do my chopping and that sort of thing. And uh, this is just about a, if I had to guess, probably about a 12 foot wide by probably about 20 foot long room. It's under our kitchen. I'm in the basement. Uh, let me just pan around and show you. I mean, I am in the dungeon. Whoa. But, yeah, this is why I get to work in here. And when you're doing this sort of thing, of course, I have my shop back there for when I'm done cutting. I can uh, clean everything up. It's not super clean right now because I've been chopping a lot of frames for some uh, paintings that I completed. So let me show you uh, the tools that I'll be using. So here's the chop saw that I use, also known as a miter saw. And I got it at Home Depot. I don't think I paid more than $120 for it. And I have it on this little maybe 2x4 table. And I've bolted it down. You can, uh, I think I just have two bolts diagonal to hold it in place. It's really not going to go anywhere because the setting is going to stay the same where it's at right now. So you're not going to be moving it around too much often enough. Uh, feel free to do what you want. And it's important you have supports for your molding built on. So I have flush with the uh, chop saw bed here. I have a piece of 2 by 4 Brace down to the table. You can make a leg sticking up, whatever. I didn't put the leg there because I wanted a cubby space to roll things in and out. And on this side is the important side. Uh, this, again, a 2 by 4 base with a leg and brace. And the key here uh, is the measuring device that I use for uh, measuring how big to make my frame. I'm going to try to show you a detail of that. Hold on. Okay, all, all this piece of metal is, this measuring device here, is a drafting ruler, 48 inches long. And it's actually probably about two, two and a quarter wide. I only needed to see the top part where the measurement was for inches. So I've drilled holes and I've attached it to this upright piece of three quarter pine. So I've basically made a L, and then this is my measuring tool. Now it has nothing to do with how far away it is from the uh, chop saw blade. Um, it's just kind of what I use to measure my pieces of molding that I need to cut. Now I'm going to show you how I, with this little sample, this is the molding. Of course I have it in longer length, but for demonstration purposes it's easier to handle this small one. And I'm going to show you how I clean it up to uh, create a measurement and make a cut. Now the first thing I want to say is this method only works with this style of floater framing. I've tried cutting some profile types of wood and it's possible on some, but you have to be super careful with your math and uh, using your brain extensively. Um, first thing you're always going to do is have, see how the molding the facing is going to be against the fence of the chop saw. So you see how I have it? Just move it against. Your first cut is going to be creating the first 45 for your frame. And now we have the 45 cut. And let me show you how I measure a uh, particular uh, size on the molding. Okay. Now, once I've made that chop, now I'm going to put it to the, this inside edge. That's where either your canvas is going to be. Now with floater frames, you always leave a channel around. So uh, we're going to assume, uh, in this case, I'm going to cut a 4-inch piece. My panel, we're going to assume, is 4 inches uh, high. And I always have a channel around. And that channel is an eighth of an inch for that small of a painting. You can make the channel whatever you want. You just need to add that into your measurement. 
So in this case I have four inches will be the size of my panel and I'm adding a quarter inch because I want a eighth inch channel all the way around uh, when I put this inside the floater frame later it's because this will be painted inside all black and you'll see that video on the third part. So what we do is put it against the uh, measuring device here, always having this inside edge right flush. And uh, then we mark off. Let me try to get the camera in here better. Okay, I'm going to make the mark. I can see down with my hash marks from my ruling device here, my ruler. And I'm going to see the four inch mark. And then I'm going to add a quarter inch and make a mark on my wood. Like you see here, there's my mark. That's four inches plus four and a quarter inches. The quarter inch being for the eighth inch reveal all the way around. Now I'll go back to saw and chop it. Now remember, this is our original cut. Now we're going to flip it over, and we've measured it on our ruler device, made the cut mark, and we're going to line that up with the blade. The blade is eight inch, inch thick. You want the left hand side of the left hand side of the blade to be right on this mark. Now I'll try to get it in there and show you but it's going to be difficult. You just want you want to side it when you bring your saw down you can see you can put it in here find out where your saw is going to come down by doing a dry run like this lifting up your you can check where the teeth will hit. That looks good. Now I'm going to make the cut. Hold on. And there we have one piece of the length that we need for our painting. And you would copy this same process for all the sides that you need. But this is how I cut my molding. And I just want to show you a part about a longer stick on how you just keep flipping back and forth. Like if I had an a, a excess amount left over, I would then, once I made my cut, take that longer stick that's over here on the support, and I would flip that around, flip it back around where you have the orientation like this, and recut the 45, flip it back over, and then go over to my measuring di device and repeat whatever size you need and cut again. Flip back over, cut off the excess, creating a new 45 and so on. That's how I cut my molding. Just want to show you too, it's not super neat right now. I've been doing some painting here, but I've made this brace thing in my basement here. And you can create whatever method, but it's basically some uprights with sticks coming out here and some nails on the very ends. And when I have my length molding cut, this is where I store it, and I have it right next to the saw, so it's convenient. And just want to show you that little storage technique that you can do. Now I'm going to show you uh, what I do if I had a very long piece of wood and it was very hard to flip around and be kind of cumbersome that way. What I'll do is I'll just cut sections of it out that will allow me to cut certain size frames that I'll be doing. And I've created a chart to show you how, um, what size to cut them, and uh, let me explain that. Okay, this is uh, just for some common sizes I cut for framing. Uh, for a 5x5, five five, it requires 25 inches of molding, because you have waste, and I'll show you that in a moment. So that's what all these measurements equal. I figured it out by dis, uh, doing the technique I'm going to show you now. Okay, first time you start cutting your own framing, you're going to have to set up these systems, but once you set them up, they're going to work great. And so in this case, let's say I was making an 8x10, I just have two short pieces of some scraps uh, left over, and, and it'll explain the uh, process. I say it's an 8x10, I would lay, once I cut all the four pieces, I lay them out end to end. You can see the waste that happens here in the V. And once I lay all that out, I take a measurement how much all, all those wood pieces equal, and let's say it's 24 inches or whatever, then I know that I can take a, a piece of a longer stick, cut it at 24 and have enough to uh, cut out an 8x10. Uh, 
I always like even if it said like right on the money 25 inches 24 inches whatever the size is I always add inch and a half just to be on the safe side make sure I don't end up short and also the key for this is going to be make sure uh, you try to do this when you're cutting your length out out in the garage or wherever for your length molding but you want to check for imperfections sometimes there's little tiny knots in the wood that you didn't notice out when you were cutting and you'll have to cut around those um, so that's the danger of not paying attention when you're cutting these sections out ahead of time you want to make sure you're not going to have some blemish that is going to be distracting not easily covered up you may be able to spackle it in and do the finishing which will be the next video uh, to uh, touch up but something to be aware of all right now I'm going to uh, go to the joining area and show you how I put all this together and make a frame Okay, this is my table where I do all the joining of my frames and uh, we'll go over all the different tools that I use. Um, I already got some frames in progress, but you'll get the uh, concept of how to use this uh, corner vise and all that sort of thing. So uh, let's do some uh, close-ups and uh, take a look. Okay, let's start with my corner vise. This thing, I love this thing. This is great. It's been around the block for quite a few years and you adjust your moldings, you know, depending on the width. You have the jaw to hold it in place. You don't need to crank down super heavy, but tight enough so it doesn't move when you nail it together. So that's how that works. And uh, it normally wouldn't look this ratty, but b being down here in basement, moisture sometimes with the air. Uh, it also has a tab on the side here that this tab here, you can rotate it. And you can probably find these on Amazon. I got this in Next Town over years ago, and I believe that place is closed now, but I haven't seen anything like this at Home Depot, but maybe in, in uh, different geographical areas they would have this, but huge investment, and uh, I think I only paid maybe $30 for this. I actually have two of them. The other one's out in the um, garage right now. Normally I might have it down here if I'm doing a bigger frame, so it acts as a support for the far corner that you're joining um, and then, or you can join two frames at once, uh, two corners at once, and, and be a little more efficient, but uh, definitely handy. And here we have my, what brand, Arrow, it's an Arrow nail gun, electric. I love this thing. I had another Arrow product for years, and it finally failed on me. The only thing that seems to be hard to find is... Uh, my old one had like a rubber tip on here and that helps when you're driving when you just pull the trigger and it depresses the nail in um, it acts as a bumper so you don't get a, a indentation in the wood but I've learned to not press too hard up against the wood and fire at the same time because it can really put a dent from this uh, u-shaped area here um, and I'll show you that it's still workable because once you get done with the frame you have to sand it anyway so that takes out some of that and the finishing process takes out some but you can minimize it by not really pushing too hard so we'll go over that and you'll need small little hammer and a nail punch and then I have the key to this too the beauty of this is a little jar of spackle I don't use it actual wood filler I thought that was too oily and just dried up on me I, th I like this paintable uh, spackle so that uh, I can avoid having to fill nail holes uh, used to be I didn't do that and then uh, on the finished frame upstairs I would have to sit there and then fill the holes after the finishing process was done so I just saved the step it works great and um, you'll need some wood glue and now let's uh, show you how I join some together. Okay, now that I've showed you all the uh, components that are used for the framing, uh, this is the uh, one represents one chopped frame. Uh, I usually over in the chop section, I put a little rubber band around it, keep it together. I'll, I'll identify what painting goes with with a little piece of paper, or I just write on the back of the frame in light pencil what painting it is. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to put the two uh, 
You take your rubber band off and we're going to join, make the L's that will then become the frame. Okay, now we're just going to take the uh, frame and in this case uh, I just cut some uh, pieces of molding scraps but you'll have longer sides and a shorter side typically and you always want to orient whatever side you're going to choose like I put the long side in this part of the vise short side here and I always follow that that system then when uh, the two L's go together they'll match up and become a frame but all I do to make those L's is I'll take a long side and a short side put them in the vise and I put some glue on one side you don't need to slather it on there just a little bit of that join it together like so get my nail gun put the nails in take my punch and my hammer and lightly countersink the heads of those nails so that I can then put the spackle in to cover up the holes ahead of time before I sand. And then when I sand it will come out perfectly smooth and you want it to be in the hole pretty well. If you have some excess no big deal it's going to sand flat and that will give you a nice smooth uh, like it was just joined with glue or something like that. And I'll set this aside. You want to wipe out being careful because you just nailed it but wipe out any glue set that aside to let it dry do your next section that matches up with it put that with it off scene here and uh, let those two pairs dry and then on the next step here I'll show you how to go about joining those two L's together I'm going to take my nail gun and depress, push down a little bit to trigger the nail. Turn it on first. Here we go. And now I countersink. And when it gets to this stage, I don't put the putty in yet. I'll put it in. You'll see in a moment. I turn the frame to do the other corner before any glue drips out too much or something. Repeat the process. Now is when I'll take the putty and I use just a screwdriver. You can use a little knife or whatever, a little spatula, but cover those nail holes. It doesn't have to be a lot. It'll sand down later and I put some in the corner of the frame. Wipe off the excess and I can do the same over here behind the scenes back here for the previous hole. And this just saves me so much time in the end because I can just sand it. And that's your joint frame. Now you want to look for any bubbles of glue that came out in the corners. And I just take one of my workshop towels here, get my nail punch in there and get that excess out. No big deal. Check the back for any excess glue in the corners. Wipe that off. And then you'll be sanding that again later. And that's your finished frame. And I'll let that sit for several hours before I sand. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I sand the frame. Nothing special. You can see all the dried layers of the spackle and that sort of thing. And I have written on the back of here what painting it orients with and I'm going to write that on a piece of paper now and keep that to the side and to link it up with the proper uh, painting because you could have uh, a little different size
for different paintings. So you want to keep track of that going on. And just a power sander with some uh, 60 grit sandpaper on there. And we're going to sand this thing. And I'll, of course, put a little music track in there for you so you don't hear all the loud sanding for a while. But uh, you can see what I do. There we go. There's the sanding on the finished product. Dust it off, and then uh, next video will be the uh, showing you how I finish them off for painting and such. Okay, everybody, this concludes uh, part two of my floater frame molding video. Uh, part three soon to come on how I finish my frames. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you're new to the channel, thank you for checking it out, and I invite you to subscribe. And for everybody, uh, you can follow me. I invite you to follow me on Facebook, my art page, Habowski Studio. And I'm now on Instagram, at Habowski Studio. So check me out there. I post pictures of works in progress and other art-related things that you won't see on my YouTube channel. So with that said, until next time, Take care. Bye.